Deep in the Taima Oasis in Saudi Arabia's Tobuk province lies a 4,000-year-old rock formation with an unusual feature. It is split down the middle by a straight cut with the precision of what some believe to be a laser. The Al Nasla rock is composed of two sandstones supported by a naturally formed pedestal with a perfect slit down the middle. While the exact cause of the split has yet to be determined, wind-blown sand and periodic rain could have created the unusual shape. Some even suggest the desert's ancient inhabitants cut the rock in half using a lost ancient technology of laser beams. Wherever the truth lies amongst the theories, the precision of the cut is eerily similar to what modern cutting techniques could produce. Other examples of precision cutting in the ancient world that we definitely know that are the results of human effort can be seen in Egypt. A prime example of this exists in the ancient northern region of the stone quarries in Aswan, Egypt. The object is an ancient unfinished obelisk, considered by experts to be the largest known one of its kind. The obelisk and wider quarry were inscribed on the UNESCO World Heritage List in 1979, along with other examples of Upper Egyptian architecture. Its creation was ordered around 1508 to 1458 BC to possibly complement what would later be known as the Lateran Obelisk. The unfinished obelisk is nearly one-third larger than any ancient Egyptian obelisk ever erected. If finished, it would have measured around 41.75 meters or 137 feet. Based on archaeological findings, the obelisk's creators began to carve it directly out of the bedrock, but cracks appeared in the granite and the project was abandoned. The bottom side of the obelisk is still attached to the bedrock. The unfinished obelisk offers unusual insights into ancient Egyptian cutting techniques, with marks from the workers' tools still clearly visible, as well as colored markings left behind from where they were working. As far back as humans existed, the need to cut materials with precision has always been a necessity, and the techniques applied have only been improved over the course of time. In the case of the ancient Egyptians, the use of hammers and chisels was instrumental in cutting a series of holes in an extracted block of stone. Then water-soaked wooden wedges were inserted into the holes, where they expanded and split the rock. Other cutting techniques involved the use of copper saws along with sand and even bronze tools that were used with limestone and other soft rocks. These are just some of the many techniques applied to accomplish the task. The precision cutting techniques of modern times have negated the need for such manpower, allowed for the cutting of various materials, and reduced the time it would take to accomplish such a feat when compared to ancient times. At this point, let's talk about two popular modern cutting techniques that offer such precision. Laser and plasma cutting are both methods well suited to the CNC machine production process. These technologies are thermal processes commonly used in industrial settings to cut materials. The main difference between the two technology lies in the source of the technology's cutting power. Laser cutting machines use a narrow and intense ray of light to cut through materials. This is in contrast to plasma cutters, which use a device for generating a directed flow of plasma for cutting. Laser cutting can be used to cut a wide range of materials, including ceramic, wood, plastic, and metals. This is a stark contrast to plasma cutting, which can only be used to cut conductive materials. Laser cutting is faster, more accurate, and produces a better surface finish than plasma cutting. The laser method is also better suited for making intricate cuts than plasma cutting. On the other hand, plasma cutting machinery requires less maintenance and is less costly than laser cutting equipment. Both technologies are mainly used to cut metals, although laser cutting is commonly used for other materials as well. Selecting between the two CNC cutting processes can depend on many factors. In this video, 
we will compare laser cutting and plasma cutting in terms of speed, materials, cost, and other factors that distinguish these two techniques. Laser cutting works by directing the highly concentrated energy of laser beam into a material producing local melting and separation of the workpiece. Depending on the details of the cutting technique, the laser may melt the material with an assistive gas stream blowing the melted material out of the way. Or it may directly change the cutting material from solid form to gas, also known as sublimation, with the kerf removed in vapor form. Kerf is the width of a cut. It is the result of material removed during the cutting process. Laser cutting equipment can cut structural and pipe materials as well as thin sheets. Three main types of lasers are used for laser cutting. CO2, neodymium, and fiber laser systems. Although the laser cutter types are all similarly constructed, they differ in that each kind of laser has a different power range and each is best suited to certain material types and thicknesses. With CO2 cutters, the cutting is done using electrically stimulated CO2. Neodymium, or crystal laser cutters, produce beams through neodymium-doped yttrium orthovanidate and neodymium-doped yttrium aluminum garnet. Finally, fiber cutters use fiberglass to cut through materials. The lasers are derived from what's called a sleep laser and are thereafter amplified through special fibers. CO2 lasers are the most popular because they can cut a variety of materials, are low power, and are reasonably priced. Laser cutting is widely used in sectors like electronics, medicine, aircraft, and transportation. Due to the laser's ability to create precise cuts and finishes, it is mostly used to cut metals like tungsten, steel, aluminum, brass, or nickel. Lasers are also used to cut wood, silicone, ceramics, and other non-metals. Let's talk about some of the advantages laser cutting has over plasma cutting. Accuracy The energy of a laser beam is concentrated on a single tiny area, penetrating the material and cutting it. This entire process produces a thin cutting stream or curve in the workpiece as opposed to the wider curve produced by plasma cutting. A wide range of materials. Laser cutters are capable of cutting a wide range of materials, including metal, wood, plastic, and ceramics. Plasma cutters, on the other hand, are limited to cutting conductive materials. Speed. Laser cutters are a more energy efficient and faster option for cutting metal compared to plasma cutters, making them a better choice for the environment. What is plasma cutting and how does it work? Plasma cutting is a technology that forces a hot, electrically charged gas through a small nozzle to hit the workpiece at high velocity and pressure, eroding and melting a cutting path through the material. Essentially, Compressed air or inert gases like argon or nitrogen are forced through a small nozzle at high speeds. The combination of gas, high speed, pressure, and an external electric charge from the plasma, which is an electronically conductive ionized gas, can reach temperatures of up to 20,000 degrees Celsius. Similar to a laser cutter, a plasma cutter is a thermal cutting method where the material is melted in order to cut through it. Steel, stainless steel, aluminum, brass, and copper are among the common materials cut with a plasma torch. Only conductive metals can be used with plasma torches because the workpiece completes the electrical circuit. Plasma cutters are widely used in fabrication shops, auto repair, and restoration and industrial construction.